Who gives this woman to this man in marriage? Her mother and I do. <laughs> Christina Morris and Vincent DeCepola, are you both on this day, before family and friends, and in the presence of God, here to accept each other's hand in marriage? Yes. <laughs> but I, yes. We are. We are. We are. Yeah, That's good. Please be seated. Before we proceed, let's all take a moment to acknowledge those especially dear to the bride and groom who are no longer with us, specifically Christina's grandma, papa, and Uncle John, Vincent's grandpop, grandmom, pop, and uncles Mike, Ralph, and Chris. There is no doubt they are celebrating, uh, celebrating with us in spirit and will certainly be in our hearts about this joyous occasion. So no one has ever given me this much responsibility in my entire life. <laughs> so if you all could do a few things to help me, it'd be greatly appreciated. First thing, I'd prefer no one make direct eye contact with me. <laughs> Eyes down over here, okay? Second. If you, guys, if you guys um, would refrain from crying, that'd be great as well, because if you guys cry, I'm going to lose it up here. So if you do those two things, we actually might get through this. On that note, I would like to welcome you all here on behalf of my favorite couple. Christina and Vincent have invited all their closest friends and family to share in their special day. Everyone in this room has had a hand in shaping who these two are uh, individually. Now they will need your continued love and support in shaping who they are as a married couple. I could not be more excited to be up here today as the officiant for my sister and my future brother-in-law's wedding. Some may say I lobbied pretty hard for this, for this job up here, <laughs> but I like to think I was chosen strictly for my charm <laughs> and for the unconditional love they both have for me. <laughs> if you couldn't figure it out by now, I am Christina's older brother, and I've had the honor and privilege of being there since day one to watch her go into the stunning young woman and bride you see her today. And yes, that was a compliment, sister. <laughs> I love you. I have always wanted to be that overprotective older brother especially when it came to bring a guy into the family, but found out very quickly it's impossible not to love Vincent. Him being part of our, our uh, small core six has completed our family in the absolute best possible way. Him not being here at this point is simply unimaginable. The love story of Christina and Vincent is unique and definitely fitting of their personalities. They met studying abroad in London one fall semester. Their first official meeting was that with mutual friends uh, where Vincent made the first move and attempted to bond over being from New Jersey and of course brought, brought up Bruce, right? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I am sure this comes as no surprise to anyone that knows Vincent as he has the uncanny ability to relate to literally everyone. <laughs> 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 One month later they had their first kiss at a bar called Portobello, which I recently found out they use as a password for some of their TV accounts. <laughs> <laughs> I benefited myself. <laughs> they were inseparable from that point on. Once back at school, a long distance relationship was inevitable, but they were determined to make it work. Before it began, Vincent did his usual due diligence on Google Maps and realized six hours of driving was nothing in the grand scheme of things. They worked hard to be able to visit each other. Vincent worked two jobs for gas money, while Christina asked her recently fully employed older brother for a loan. <laughs> As you can guess, I'm still waiting for that money back, guys. <laughs> no matter how they attained the funds, nothing would get in the way of their love for one another. That love was tested post-college when they had to make a decision on where to live. Um, so they made the decision, I was told it was mutual, <laughs> for Vincent to move to North Jersey. Leaving your friends and family behind is never an easy thing. When you know what you want and you have the courage and determination Vincent does, you go for it. That decision has paid off and is the reason we are here today. One of the things I love most about Christina and Vincent is that they love and accept e each other's quirks that others might find, uh, let's say, a little troublesome. <laughs> <laughs> Vincent confesses to loving Christina's sense of humor, her dance moves, her abnormal amount of relaxation time in the morning, <laughs> the, and the fact that she refers to herself as sloth. <laughs> Christina confesses, first and foremost, to loving the fact that Vincent accepts all of these things. <laughs> she also confesses to loving the fact that he practices his own dance moves in the apartment. He still thinks his that's what sh uh, she said jokes are the funniest things in the world. 
<laughs> she loves the fact that he makes spreadsheets just for fun, and she loves the fact that he can put his stubbornness aside and let her think she wins every argument even when she is clearly wrong. <laughs> their love for one another is undeniable, and there is no doubt these two were meant to be together. They put family above everything else. They, they both love music, and they love nothing more than a bottle of wine on their couch <laughs> and a movie. Sorry. They are both kind, caring, funny, enjoyable to be around, and I am lucky to call them both family. It is clear they will go to great lengths for each other, which is the perfect foundation for a successful marriage. There is no doubt they have the blessings of everyone in this room to leave here today as husband and wife. Today is a celebration. It's a celebration of love, of commitment, friendship, family, and of two people who are in it forever. We have thousands of important moments that happen throughout our lives, but this one is regarded as one so critical we acknowledge its special status by sharing it with others. Despite all of our differences as people, love is something that we all share. And this adorable couple here is a shining example of the power that love can have. Now, if you would please welcome Christina's cousin Susie, who will read, Love is All I Am. That's high. <laughs> I've looked up these words in fear that I'd say them wrong. Is it love as a mountain or love as a simple song? And the moment that the two meet has now laid itself at your feet. And love is not convenient. It does not cease at your command. You might take it and leave it, but love is all I am. I need a boundless soft way to commend, like you as a temper and I as its tender end. And however long your fits last, second page, I will live within your shadow cast and love is still your stranger it does not respect how much you'll stand you might be love's reminder but love is all I am I need a graceful proud way to let go to smile and accept the things you don't know the losses and the gains blurred the weight of these last words and love is not excitement it's not kissing or holding hands I'm not some assignment. No, love is all I am. So Christina and Vincent have decided to get their own party started a little bit early, and I uh, feel nothing shows the union of two families better than sharing a glass or two of wine. Um, they have chosen one of their favorite whites and one of their favorite reds to blend together as a symbol of their families blending together today. No idea what this is going to taste like, but uh, <laughs> <laughs> before I ask the families to come up, I would like to welcome Vince's sister, Alicia, to serenade the ceremony with her rendition of Songbird. Like now. 
never before. And I wish you all the love in the world, but most of all, I wish it from myself, and the songbirds keep singing like they know the score. Like never before, like never before, like never Thank you, Alicia. That was gorgeous. Okay. Now, please welcome Vince's sister-in-law, Cashel, who will read Every Songbird Says. I'm a tiny heart that's falling fast, like a hummingbird, like an hourglass. I'm on a boat at the turning way for the distant horn of a promise ring. This bed is old, but the dream is new. You can borrow mine if you break a few. I'm a mountainside I can wash away. I'm a pool of tears on a wedding day. I get lost a lot and you meet me there. I can close my eyes and find you anywhere. I can hold you close while you wander free, but the long walk home says you're good for me. I can take a lot, I'll give you more. We're a tiny heart, but the blood is warm. I'm a thunder cloud, I'm cutting through. Every songbird says, I'm in love with you. Now, please welcome the Long Beach legend, <laughs> or everyone else knows him as Uncle Jim, to sing his rendition of a family favorite, This Magic Moment. Chrissy and Vince, thank you very much for the privilege of letting me to participate in your wedding. I am so honored, I can't begin to tell you. I'm going to sing a song here uh, written by Doc Pomus and uh, covered by the uh, Jay and the Americans, family favorite song. I welcome everybody to participate in singing this. I'm sure you all know it, it's a favorite. And uh, by singing, it'll actually help you get a little bit warmer, okay? <laughs> So here we go. This magic moment So different and so new Is like any other Until I kiss you And then it happens it took me by surprise, I knew that you felt it too, by the look in your eyes, sweeter than wine, softer than a summer night, everything I want I have, whenever I hold you tight, this magic moment, while your lips are close to
softer than a summer night Everything I want I have Whenever I hold you tight This magic moment While your lips are close to mine Will last forever Forever till the end of time Whoa, 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 whoa. Thank you, man. Thank you very much. Thank you, Chris. Thank you for the privilege. I'm honored. I love you so much. <laughs> Hope we'll refer for some more of that in the lobby later tonight. <laughs> All right. Um, marriage is not a legal document. No pastor, priest, Reverend Dan, or Justice of the Peace can create a marriage <laughs> because a marriage truly is nothing except the promises made and kept by two individuals. Today, Christina and Vincent, your wedding day, is one brief day in time. And although your vows were spoken in a matter of minutes, they are promises that will last a lifetime. They have chosen to write their own vows. Christina would like to go first. Friends, <laughs> that's you. <laughs> um, <laughs> when I met you, I think it's safe to say that I was a bit of a mess and completely lost. Now that I think of it, I am still a complete mess, <laughs> and I probably always will be. Um, but the difference is, is that I'm happier than I could have ever imagined because you completed me in a way I didn't know I needed. You were definitely not what I intended to find when I went to London <laughs> at the age of 21. <laughs> but I'm more grateful with every day that I did. We've been through a lot together over the last six years, many highs and lows as we like to say, <laughs> yet we've always managed to keep each other grounded and focus on what's most important to us, which is just being together, because you are my family and I'll always put you first. I promise to always stay by your side through everything in life and always try to make you laugh the same way that you do for me, <laughs> because no matter how upset I may be about something, You've always been able to make me crack a smile, even with your worst jokes. <laughs> <laughs> yes. You are the best person I know, and I still can't wrap my head around how I got so lucky. You are thoughtful, genuine, kind, brilliant, <laughs> and an amazing listener. I am honored to be loved by you. <laughs> Sorry, I was doing so good. <laughs> And I think that being loved by somebody so good is what gives me the confidence to try to be a better version of myself. This, this is really capturing all the sniffs. Great. <laughs> <laughs> so please never stop challenging me, and I promise to never stop hearing you, and always be willing to grow. You are the love of my life and my best friend, and I can't wait to spend the rest of my life with you. That's all. <laughs> Do you, Christina, welcome Vincent as your husband, offering him your love and encouragement, your trust and respect, as together you create your future? Yes. Yeah, you're good. Yes, I do. <laughs> yes? You, you do. <laughs> now Vincent will read his vows. <laughs> Christina, that's also you. <laughs> Good. As you very well know, it took me a while to write this. Not because I had nothing to say, but more because of how do you tell the person you're going to spend the rest of your life with, oh my God, I can't believe <laughs> Everything you intend to do and, and be for them in just a minute or two. I probably didn't cover everything, but here we go. I may not always be patient or kind, 
but I will do my best to acknowledge when I'm wrong and make things right. There will be plenty of times I make you laugh, and less frequently times I may make you cry, but I will work hard to not let the little things get in the way of being there for you and push my so pride to the side when I have to. I promise to listen to what you say always, not just to be able to annoy you and repeat it back verbatim when you think I'm not listening, <laughs> but to truly hear you and understand your needs. I promise to always continue to want to grow and be a better man and husband for you and will continue to support and challenge you the same. And I will use the various examples in our lives that we've been fortunate to learn from to be the best partner to you that I can be. And I'll use those same examples if and when we are to have children to be a father you will be proud of and to always keep our family in front of mind in the choices and decisions I will make. <laughs> you have taught me, challenged me, helped me, encouraged me, and most importantly, unconditionally loved me through the various ups and downs life has brought me and us in our time together so far. For six years, this day has always been our goal. But this is just the start of our journey in life. Thank you for the person you are. Thank you for the person you've made me. <laughs> and please never stop pushing me to be better. And I promise to do the same. <laughs> to you, Vincent, welcome Christina as your wife, offering her your love and encouragement your trust and respect as together you create your future? I do. Now it is time for the exchange of rings. The wedding ring is a visible symbol of the promises that have just been made. Christina, repeat after me. Vincent, I give you this ring as a symbol of my love. I give to you all that I am and accept from you all that you are. I give to you all that I am and accept from you all that you are. Vincent, repeat after me. Christina, I give you this ring as a symbol of my love. Christina, I give you this ring as a symbol of my love. I give to you all that I am and accept from you all that you are. I give to you all that I am and accept from you all that you are. Before I pronounce you husband and wife, I have just one more thing I want you to do. Your wedding day is one that seems to fly. It's a day filled with emotion, friends, family, and of course the dance floor. <laughs> Many people remember how fleeting their own wedding day was. I want you to take a few seconds to really relish in this moment. Think about the happiness that you're feeling right here and right now. Really let that feeling register in your heart and in your mind. John Lennon once said, a dream you dream alone is only a dream. A dream you dream together, that is reality. And for you both, that reality starts now. And now, by the power vested in me and by the state of New Jersey, it is, <laughs> it is my honor and privilege to pronounce you husband and wife. Vince, you may kiss your bride. <laughs> Family and friends, for the first time, I, pr I present to you Mr. and Mrs. Vincent DeCepola. <laughs> Let's party!
Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. How are we all doing tonight? Thank you, sir. I appreciate the enthusiasm. Your bride and groom just got married outside, and I know we've had time to warm up, so I think we need a little more energy than that. Ladies and gentlemen, one more time. How are we all doing tonight? Oh, yeah, that's what we're looking for. Well, before we get to your bride and groom, I've got some special people to introduce so that they can be recognized. And I'm going to get things started right now with the parents of the bride. Ladies and gentlemen, make some noise for Don and Dean Morris. And keep it going for parents of the groom, Stephen and Lisa Vesepola. And ladies and gentlemen, make some noise for the Reverend Daniel J. Morris. And now our bridal party, ladies and gentlemen, bridesmaid Ms. Alicia Vesepola, along with groomsmen Mr. Chris Lanza and the flower girl Mae McCall. And make some noise for Miss Deanna DeCepola, escorted by her and Mr. Josh Adderholt. <laughs> and next we have bridesmaid Miss Vicky Jones, escorted by her and Mr. Jack Locke. Keep it going for Ms. Jocelyn Pedrick, escorted by Mr. Jacob Weibel. And next we have Mrs. Allie Morris, escorted by Mr. James Thompson. Ladies and gentlemen, the VIPs of your bridal party, matron of honor, Jamie Gallarenzo, escorted by best man, Mr. Steven Vesepola. <laughs> and now, ladies and gentlemen, if you've not done so already, I'd like to ask everybody in the room to please rise. It gives me such great pleasure to introduce you for the second time tonight, public husband and wife, the brand new Mr. and Mrs. Decepola. Ladies and gentlemen, your bride and groom want everybody to come on out and join them on the dance floor for this song. So everybody, all guests, come on out here and join them.
Ladies and gentlemen, make some noise for the brand new Mr. and Mrs. Decepola. In case there was any question, Christina and Vincent came here to party, now you know. So what we need right now is we need to get everybody off the dance floor and over to their seats. Because our bride and groom are about to have their very first dance as husband and wife. Round of applause for your bride and groom on their first dance. And at this time, I'd like to invite Christina's father to please join his daughter out on the dance floor.
and Jim Lazo, a big round of applause for Pat Potter, his daughter, on her wedding day. All right, then, Mr. Kern, please escort your mother out to the dance floor. Equally big round of applause for proud mother and her son on his wedding day. And at this time, I'd like to invite everybody else back to their seats. And ladies and gentlemen, at this time, if we could have everyone's attention in the room now to our dance floor for our first host. Thank you. Good evening, everyone. My beautiful wife, Jean, and I would like to thank you all for being here. We truly hope you all have a great time. At least that's our intention. <laughs> this evening, Lisa, thank you for hosting with her for dinner last night. It was a terrific event. That's what it says on my paper. But from me to my heart, you guys are awesome. We love you. Thank you. So Danny, thanks for uh, stepping up to do the official today. Good job, boy. It's no accident that we're here today at the Molly Pitcher Inn. Christina's grandma and papa used to come here every year. So for my sweet and sensitive daughter, it's a way of being close to them again. I'm the most important. Don't start crying on me. <laughs> Day of her life. For those of you that don't know my daughter that well, that well yet, you may find out that she's a very strong-willed and independent young lady. She came into this world on her own terms. When we arrived at the hospital, we were assured that she would be born before midnight and would be sharing her birthday with her grandfather. I guess she didn't want to share her birthday. So she held out till 1.30 in the morning. I should have known my fancy. Christina has always done things her own way. I tried to teach her the proper technique to play basketball, but she was more interested in just having fun. So we did things her way. 
and we just had some, a good time. If she had one of those moments when she did something wrong, uh -huh, <clears throat> she wouldn't allow us to punish her. All of a sudden, she'd be headed upstairs, and when it asked what she was doing, she'd say, I'm punishing myself. <laughs> Later, she'd throw letters of apology down the stairs. Yeah, she definitely was a free thinker. Another thing about our daughter is that she is extremely focused when she decides what she wants. She absolutely had to go to school in New England because she belongs there. Well, she wasn't too positive she'd get into UMass, the school she had her heart set on, so she started a correspondence with the Dean of Admissions and tutored her case. I don't know if she needed to do that or not, but I thought it was a pretty smooth move. <clears throat> she doesn't like to leave things to chance. When she was at UMass, she got her sights set on studying abroad. Apparently, if she couldn't, she would most likely die or something. <laughs> like any good father, saddled with tuition bills, I said, are you crazy? To which she replied, what if I can do it and it won't cost you any more than you're already paying? <laughs> Obviously, being the loving dad and sucker that I am, I paid from the rest of history. When she got to England, she didn't do a lot of studying, she did do a lot of sightseeing, got a tattoo. She met a goofy boy, she fell in love, and made us come across the ocean to visit them. I don't know how I didn't see that coming when I said yes, they were studying the college then. Anyway, that was the first time we met Vince. <clears throat> Truth be told, I didn't really have much expectation that this new romance would last past the return trip across the ocean. <laughs> Getting to know him wasn't big on my list at the time. <laughs> Christina had other ideas. I remember her saying, I just want you to love him the way that I do. <laughs> okay, first of all, that's not really possible. <laughs> Secondly, you'll be getting out of college and working while he has another year of college left, half a state away. We all know how that will end, right? Wrong. They did continue to see each other, Vince graduated, and they became a real couple. Man, she is relentless when she wants something. Christina has always wanted a special wedding day. I seem to recall her practicing the ceremony with Barbie and Ken in her bedroom when she was five years old. <laughs> Christina, your mom and I truly hope that this day is everything we dreamed it would be. Vincent, I'm not sure if you're a partner today or a victim. <laughs> Time will tell. <laughs> One thing I know for sure, you have earned our respect. It was obvious how difficult it was for you in the beginning to just be yourself. <clears throat> but you kept coming back, and maybe you just wore us down. <laughs> they say the true survivors aren't necessarily the smartest, strongest, or even the richest people. Survivors are those that most readily adapt to the situation they're currently faced with. I don't believe I've ever seen anyone adapt as readily as you have just to be with Christina. Graduating, finding a job in an area you weren't familiar with, getting a room with people you didn't know, making friends at your new job, teaching tennis on the weekends, joining Big Brothers, all in a strange environment truly needs to be commended. <clears throat> now you're going to the gym, you're working out, eating healthy, dressing like the stud that you are. <laughs> No doubt. <clears throat> just to let you know, I told your wife that people really do love you just the way you are, and she should just leave it alone. <laughs> anyway, I tried. Let me know how that works out. I'm not going to make a big deal about the secrets of a successful marriage. You've both seen how it works right in your own home for the past 27 years. I hope you pay attention. <laughs> I will leave you with this. Be all of the things that you love about others, and you will love yourself. Love your partner more than you love yourself, and you'll be happy together forever. The Christian and Vince, no couple has ever had a better foundation to start from. Do it right, and do it once. Love you with all your heart. And I'd like to invite up our matron of honor, Jamie. Come on out here with your champagne glass.
Thank you all for being here today. I'm Jamie, Christina's maid of honor and first cousin. I'm also her sister. I'm her sister cousin, but not in a hillbilly sort of way. <laughs> Let me explain. Chrissy and I have been close since we were little. I am six years older, but I never felt our age difference. Even as children, when we'd act silly together and tell each other secrets, I even told her about my first training bra. <laughs> Who brags to a five-year-old about a new bra? <laughs> I may be technically older, but Chris is an old soul and has always been wise beyond her years. If you were to listen to our conversations, you'd swear she's the older one. She's an amazing listener, gives the best advice, and she's hysterical. I really look up to her like she's my sister. But it's not just me. She makes everyone around her feel just as comfortable. She puts everyone before herself. She dedicates her life to causes she believes in. She's a tree-hugging vegetarian. But she also advocates for women and children in crisis and devotes her life's work to helping others, including grieving children. Chrissy, I admire you so much. <laughs> Six years ago, when Chrissy met Vince in London, she wasn't really looking for love. But then in walked this sweet, sensitive guy who just wanted to play guitar for her. <laughs> How could she resist? As their love moved back from overseas, it only grew stronger. Chris had met her match, a man that was as smart, caring, and goofy as she is. She'd even say he's the nicer one. <laughs> After college, Vince took a risk and moved to a town in suburbia where he knew no one to be with Chrissy. This is what you're willing to do when you just know you found the love of your life. But Chrissy made him feel safe because she had no doubts about the love they shared and their future together. Chrissy may have made him feel safe, but not everyone did. When Vince first met the Morrises, Danny answered the door with a machete. <laughs> True story. Vince has risked life and limb for this relationship. Also, when Vince came to Sag Harbor the first summer, he wore long black socks to the beach. No one let him live that one down. And to make matters worse, he fed the seagulls. <laughs> It was like a nautical remake of Alfred Hitchcock's The Birds. <laughs> but seriously, Vince has felt like a part of our family since day one. He is such a great person, he is so easy to love. And seeing how happy he makes Chris just makes us love him even more. And somehow, he's grown to love us too. <laughs> now, he's the one making fun of the rest of us. <laughs> He has been just fine. Vince, we may have a funny way of showing it, but we love you. We are really excited and blessed for you to be a part of the family. And I feel incredibly lucky to now call you my brother cousin. <laughs> Chris, I am so honored to stand by your side as you marry Vince today just as you stood by me and made my wedding so special. I don't think you'll ever know how much everything you did meant to me. From the bachelorette party to the shower, with countless phone calls, to achieving an advanced degree in arts and crafts. But that's what we do for each other. And just like I memorized your first dance recital moves so I can sit in the front row and mimic the moves with you, I'm here today, next to you, 
making sure your dress falls nicely, your hair stays flawless, with a drink in your hand and a smile on your face. <laughs> you are so beautiful. Grandma and Baba would be so proud if they were here to see you today. So, as, Chris, as Chrissy's probably worried about how we are all enjoying the evening, let us make sure that this beautiful couple is having the best night of their lives. I love you both so much. Now, can we please all raise our glasses to the bride and groom and wish them a lifetime of love and happiness. Cheers. Now we're going to bring up our best man, Steven. Come on out here. Vincent Michael, when you were born, I was ecstatic. I really did run down the street yelling, I have a brother! <laughs> but as a six-year-old, I, <laughs> I didn't know just how proud of you I would be. You are a true friend, consistent, and thoughtful. I turned to my little brother for guidance and perspective, because you're not going to find a man whose actions more closely align to his values. And that's because you've always known yourself. And I can say that with certainty, because I have known you for your whole life. And love bubble? <laughs> Nini Poo? You were one weird kid. If you were to visit the Decepola household on a Saturday morning when Vincent was three or four, there's a high probability you'd find him watching rebroadcasts of Sports Center, the classic The Rocketeer, or The Sandlot, in his superhero underwear, which of course, he wore backwards so he could see the picture. I, I had 17 or 18 more of these guys, so just like, <laughs> in his own words, Vincent peaked in middle school. He finally had front teeth. And he let his hair grow long into that classic white boy fro. And as we all know, the weird kid developed a passion for weird music. <laughs> a passion that he's not afraid to share with us today. So our wonderfully weird Vincent goes to London, travels through Europe, and comes back dating a girl from New Jersey. <laughs> Chrissy. You look beautiful. I don't remember meeting you in London. <laughs> but as some of you may recall from Vincent's speech at my wedding, that was entirely Vincent's fault. But even to someone as obtuse as I am in these matters, it didn't take me long to realize that you were the perfect fit for my brother. You put up with our antics, and 
I've met Danny, you've had ample training. <laughs> no one is safe. You have the biggest heart, and you truly value family. And most importantly, they bitch it off. Your weird matches his weird. And that, you guys, is the perfect recipe for a lifetime of happiness. So let's raise our glasses. To the bride and groom, and a lifetime of happiness. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, my name is Ryan along with Kevin and Lori. We're from the Sound Studio DJs and we'll be your entertainment this evening. I invite you to sit back and relax. Your first course is served. Also